Greetings, my friends, and welcome to Polymer Clay Caning, Components and Design. We're going to make another monochrome cane today because I really think it helps you to just use one color with regard to compositions and scale. So choose one color and get your black and white. I'm using two packages of each, and I put them through the machine like this. I just roll over them a little bit after they're cut into three pieces, and I get uh, sheets quickly. You don't have to do any more conditioning, okay, because those are going to become conditioned while you're making your blends. So you're slicing, you're making sheets, and you can end up with something about like this. Then make some cuts in all but two, and put them together like this. Um, all you have to do is just trim off those sides to get that rectangular shape that you're going to want to make your three-part blend. We'll put those extra pieces aside. And for this one, I wanted a pretty good sized piece, so I made another layer. I just pieced it together, added that white corner after this picture was taken, and just made another stack and started to blend. Uh, you can make any quantity of any of these blends, and you'll see as you go, you know, how much material you're wanting to end up with. Um, I use my blends kind of choppy. Uh, I don't go any smoother than just about this, but everybody's got to do it the way they want to. With the black, you're going to want to trim some off. Uh, same thing if you had a lot of white at the end. Okay, So just make it kind of balanced, and then cut it into a stack, whatever size stack you can make out of it that's equal. And I compressed mine because of the way I was going to use it. But you'll see as you watch through this what you're going to want to do. Here's an offset blend. Uh, you know, you do that so that you have pure color on each end. When you make the blends um, absolutely equal, uh, it blends out all the white and all the color. But uh, you can do that if you want to. And there was a simple jelly roll and fan fold um, that you've probably seen in other videos. And uh, we're going to make our stripes now. I'm going quickly, but this is something you want to watch through, then play around, stop and start. Um, so I've got this stack, black and white, cut some slices, and lay them on a sheet of color. That's about a number five, I think. I don't like the sheets to be too thick of the color. I just like them there for lines, accent. And I made a black and white blend for this cane. I don't always, but uh, I like having that third thing to use um, blend-wise. I made a nice long strip and uh, fan folded that and just made a rounded top on it. So it ends up like a pack of gum shape, but you can make the top round if you wanted to. And I did do that and then I put a rod in it. This is a cane bender, second to the smallest size. And that's what I have at Tiny Pandora to help you with, you know, this part of the process, having the right sizes of rods. So I just threw that little log into the channel I made and laid it on top of a line. There are a million ways to do this. And then I made all my components the same scale and size. And I cut them all in half. And as you probably know by now, I work only with halves at a time. Because that way you're not out of material before you started and you can really explore it. So put some together. You see I put my stripe with my three-part blend and then I kind of leaned on the end there so that I could roll it around something else. This is just pure creativity for you. It's your fun time. It's a blast and the souffle doesn't stick together as much as a lot of clays do. So if you make some placement that you're not thrilled with, you can take it apart a lot more easily than the real sticky clays, I think. Now there's my um, little jelly roll and I just pinched it into a triangle. Oh, excuse me, a teardrop. And then made a little more pointy, kind of like a water drop, and I put a line on it. So that I can throw it in later. See, I added some black fill where I made that point just to keep it pointy. And all these things will come to you as you go. You know, the more you mess with it, the more you see what you want to do with it. Uh, make yourself some little snakes, and I just made them into triangles and stuck them in places where I wanted to keep the shape and I uh, didn't want it to mash together too much. Get your tools, make your indentations where you want them, drop in what you want to put in them. You've got all those things on your table, see? And slice it and put it together. It's going to look different every time, and I think you'll really enjoy it. 
So thanks for watching. Come see me at tinypandora.com if you want any tools. And happy claying.